It's a busy summer of spacewalks on board the International Space Station that kicks off next week when Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Mazurkin go outside the Russian segment of the International Space Station. It's the first of four spacewalks that are currently on the plan for Expedition 36. To talk more about what we're, is going to happen on Monday, I'm joined by Lawrence Thomas, who is the Increment 36 EVA manager. Uh, I mentioned a moment ago that Fyodor Yurchikin has got a great deal of experience spacewalking, Mazurkin none at all. Uh, is that a, a, a routine thing to, to put a very experienced spacewalker with a rookie? Yeah, I think that's you know pretty much standard. Uh, as with most things, when you do something for the first time, you tend to make mistakes. So one way to help mitigate that issue is to, to do it with somebody who's done it before. Mm -hmm. um, from an EVA perspective, uh, not only is it beneficial to have uh, an experienced crew member there on the day of the EVA, uh, but that means they probably trained together leading up for the increment itself. Uh, so that allows the senior crew member to help the new guy learn the tricks of the trade, um, you know, figure out the right way to do things, and teach him the pitfalls and the, the uh, things that he wants to look out for when he's doing his EVAs. In this case, they have yet another experienced spacewalker in Pavel Vinogradov, who's there as Absolutely. well to help them get, help them get ready. Absolutely. Most of the work here on Monday is going to be around the Zarya module. Get, br walk us through what is uh, what what the tasks are for Monday. Uh, so there's basically two tasks on Zarya uh, as part of Monday's EVA. Uh, the first one is going to be replacing a regulator panel that has expired uh, in the Russian cooling system. So they're going to change that out and bring the old one back inside. Uh, and also they're going to be uh, installing some cable clamps and fair leads in preparation for the next Russian EVA. Uh, during Russian EVA 34 that's planned for August 15th, um, the crew's going to be routing um, some cables that will eventually provide power and data uh, for the Russian MLM module that will launch later this year. So we're going to need these clamps and uh, fair leads to secure those cables to station. Because Zarya is the, is the path for those uh, for power and and data and and other things that are coming from the U.S. segment of the station to this new module, right? Correct. And the uh, the uh, the first piece of hardware that is that they're working on. You said it is expired. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work, right? Correct. Correct. It's just it's reached the end of its life, and you know it's preventative maintenance. You know mm -hmm. they want to go out there. Obviously, coolant's very important on the space station, so they want to make sure they take care of that problem before it becomes a problem. In, in all of these tasks, is this a, uh, a lot of, uh, is, is it easy installations, uh, comparatively speaking, or, or are these hard installations? Well, I would say for the tasks for these, uh, for this EVA in particular, there's not one that's particularly hard uh, in comparison to other things that we've done. One thing that I've always admired about uh, Russian EVA hardware is they always design it to where it's very user friendly, uh, very simple uh, interfaces, uh, very intuitive. So. Um, uh, I don't see anything on this that's more complicated. I, if I was to pick anything out that uh, to watch out for for these EVAs, it's just um, the amount of uh, um, ground they're going to cover during this EVA and also the amount of hardware they're going to manipulate. Um, the crew's going to be up and down Zarya. They're going to be on the Peheo. They'll be on the service module. They're going to be on MRM2 and DC1. So they're going to cover a lot of ground during this EVA. I think the only module they won't be on on the Russian segment is MRM1. Um, in addition, there's a lot of hardware they're going to be manipulating, a lot of uh, things they have to actuate, you know, a lot of cable clamps they have to install, so a lot of hand-intensive tasks. So if I was going to say if there's anything to watch out for in this EVA, it's just uh, you know, to see if the crew start having some hand fatigue as we start getting closer to the end of the EVA. You mentioned that a big part of this work here is installing clamps for cables that are to, are to come later. There, there's still more work after this in order to get ready for, uh, that not for this EVA, but there is additional future work to get ready for this new module, right? Oh, uh, absolutely. There's quite a bit of uh, tasks that need to be performed by the Russian EVA crew members before MLM arrives. Um, not only do they need to route power and data cables and reconfigure KERS equipment for uh, the arrival of the MLM itself, um, but it's part of a larger reconfiguration effort because the MLM is going to end up going where DC-1 is now, which is the Russian airlock. Um, so MRM-2 is going to become the new Russian airlock uh, once DC-1 is deorbited to make room for MLM. So there's a lot of hardware that we're going to have to move around. Uh, there's EVA hardware on the DC-1 that will have to be removed and reinstalled on MRM-2. Um, there's some antennas that we're going to have to be moved around. And there's also some science equipment on DC-1 that's going to have to be relocated before it deorbits. So we look forward to those things coming up in uh, in Russian spacewalks, but, but, not, but not on Monday. Correct. Uh, for Monday spacewalk, they have work 
on other modules besides Zarya? What, what are the other tasks that they're looking at? So they have a couple of tasks on MRM2. They have a, a new piece of science hardware called uh, Indicator, which is part of a larger experiment that's going to be uh, measuring different aspects of the ISS environment, so they'll be installing that piece of hardware. They're also going to be uh, retrieving a Venoslavos panel that has a bunch of uh, uh, science samples on it, um, so they'll be bringing that back inside. That's another one of those exposure experiments? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. There are several of those on the Russian segment, and this is another one they want to bring back inside. Um, on the service module, they're going to be re reconfiguring some uh, Coors connections. They want to do a Coors hardware test on the PEHEO in preparation for MLM arrival, make sure it's working properly. Uh, they're also going to be uh, installing some cable or some uh, gap spanners around the service module to just help in crew translation for future EVA tasks. Uh, and they're also going to be retrieving um, another payload, which is called the Photon Game Experiment, and bringing that back inside. And that's just making room for another activity that will be coming later. So that's, uh, to, m to make room for, that's a future task, future spacewalk Absolutely. Uh, task. Absolutely, absolutely. Are there, as you look at it as an EBA professional, are there tasks here that are particularly difficult or, uh, or, or particularly easy? Uh, for spacewalkers, I mean, not um, for you and me. But right, that, absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, they go through a lot of training for all this stuff. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of these items are second nature before they uh, they get on orbit. Um, I, you know, as I said earlier, I don't think there's any one particular thing on these EVAs that I would specify as particularly difficult. It's just uh, um, the amount of work that they're doing, the amount of ground they're covering, and just making sure that uh, uh, you know they take their necessary breaks when they need to uh, to keep from getting hand fatigue and worn out towards the end of the EVA. Be hopefully, it'll be interesting to see a lot of these areas, too, because they're both going to be wearing uh, U.S. helmet cameras. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know, the the Russian side borrows a lot of our U.S. hardware for EVAs on a periodic basis, and the helmet cameras are one uh, that sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't. Um, on a lot of recent EVAs, they've been... Uh, both crew members will be using our helmet cameras, but sometimes uh, there's a window in the top of the Orlon suit, and so... Uh, Sometimes they want to be able to use that window and the helmet cameras block that view. Uh, so, you know, if they know that they're going to need to use that uh, window on the top of the Orlon, then they, they will not use the helmet cameras for that EVA. And the, the Russian suit is not designed with, with lights or cameras on it as the U.S. suit is. Exactly, exactly. We've made some adaptations so that uh, um, they can fit on the Orlon uh, for these EVAs. They found it beneficial, and uh, we like to have it on the Orlons too so that we can get a sneak peek of what's going on. I mentioned earlier, too, that there are a couple of U.S. spacewalks that are on the plan currently for the month of July. Can you, can you give us a, just the, the Reader's Digest version of, of what are we looking for Chris Cassidy and Luca Parmitano to be doing? Absolutely. Um, I think that uh, the upcoming U.S. EVAs are very similar to this next Russian EVA in the aspect that uh, there's not one major task that we're doing that's going to you know, keep us at one work site for a long period of time or is going to be, uh, you know, taking up the majority of the EVA. There's a lot of smaller tasks that they're going to be doing. The crew's going to be doing a lot of translation. Uh, they'll be covering most of uh, the U.S. segment during these two EVAs. Um, just kind of hitting the highlights on some of the tasks we're going to be doing. They're going to be replacing the space to ground uh, transceiver uh, controller um, to help provide redundancy back to that system. Uh, they're going to be deploying two radiator grapple bars that arrived on SpaceX-2. They're currently sitting on the POA. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to have to go and put them in their permanent storage location, one on P1, one on S1. Uh, and th those will be used if we have a radiator failure in the future so we can change out the radiators. Um, they're going to be retrieving two science experiments, the Missy 8 and the Orm 8, off of ELC-2, and they'll bring bringing that back inside so it can be returned to the ground. One of those exposure experiments exactly. like the Russian. Exactly. Exactly. Um, they're going to be routing the U.S. side, or completing routing the U.S. side of the MLM power and data cables. Um, and they'll also be um, retrieving a, uh, a camera that has failed on the uh, SSRMS mobile base system. Um, that's kind of the highlights and the, the big big ticket items that we're going to be doing over the two EVAs. And it shows the connection, too. You say they're going to be routing the cables from the U.S. segment up to Zarya so that later Russian spacewalkers can come get them and string them along through the clamps that are being installed on Monday. Absolutely. Yeah. So it all ends up tying <laughs> together. All one big space station. Exactly. Lawrence, thanks very much. It's uh, look forward to uh, seeing what uh, Fyodor and Sasha have, uh, as what they get to do on Monday. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Lawrence Thomas is the uh, Increment 36 EVA manager.